Hi everyone, my name is Andy Turner, I work for the Archer CSE team and in this short screencast I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of how to run interactive jobs on Archer. Interactive jobs, the doc full documentation can be found in the user guide on the Archer website. So we go to documentation, user guide and scroll down to the section on running jobs. In here is a bit on interactive jobs that tells you in a bit more detail um, what an interactive job looks like. But I'm going to run through this actually using my own terminal on Archer. So I switch to the terminal here. First of all, I'm going to log into Archer in the usual, usual way. You'll note that it um, hasn't asked for my password, and um, that's because I have an SSH agent set up. And there'll be a screencast on this if it's not already up on the website um, shortly. So the other thing I do as standard is in my bash RC file, I set up an environment per variable to point to work so I don't have to type the long path to get to the work directory every time I want to move there. Instead, um, I can just type cd dollar work. Okay, like that. Um, this is set up in my bash RC file in the following way. You can see on this line here, I just export work to point to the location of work. Um, and I do the same for the RDF as well to give me quick access to there. It's quite handy, a useful thing to do. So let's move to the work directory. The reason I do that is because work is the only file system visible from the compute nodes. So any jobs I'm going to run are going to be run from work. In here, um, I have the code from the Archer Quick Start Guide, um, the Hello World code. And instead of submitting this through the batch system using the normal job submission script, I'm going to run it, show you how to run it interactively. Um, the actual code itself, all it does is start up um, a simple parallel program, and then each process writes both to a file and to standard out of an identification of which process it is. And then it finishes. So first of all, I'm going to compile the code in a standard way. And in fact, what I forgot to do here, of course, was give it an output file name. So we'll uh, name the executable a.out. So let's just give it something more, let's move it to something more sensible. Okay, that's a better name for it. Now we're going to submit our interactive job. Now there's a couple of things to remember here. For an interactive job, you're actually going to have to be sitting at the terminal to use it. So you want the job to start quickly. Generally, you don't want to have to wait hours on end for the job to start. Interactive jobs are really useful for things like debugging, um, quick testing of code and things like that. On Archer, there's also a special queue which lets you do this quick testing. It lets you run jobs with a short turnaround so you don't have to wait for hours for a job to start. It's the queue called short. There are some limits on the queue. It's only available um, during between 9 o'clock and 5 o'clock UK time and the maximum number of nodes you can ask for is 8 and the maximum job length, job length you can ask for is 20 minutes. If you want to exceed those you'll have to submit to the standard queue and hope that it starts quickly. Here I'm going to use the short queue though um, to demonstrate what I'm doing. So another difference between it using job submission scripts and a quick and um, an interactive job sorry, is that you must specify all the options for the job on the command line for the interactive job. So all the things you'd normally put in your job submission script starting with hash PBS um, must be command line options to queue sub for an interactive job. So the first thing I'm going to do is the queue sub command itself. I'm going to tell it which queue I'm submitting to, which in this case is short, um, so I get good turnaround. Then I say it's an interactive job minus I. I tell it to export all of my environment variables with a capital V so that I have all the environment variables I'm expecting uh, in my shell because I'll get an interactive shell at the end of this. L, um, it allows me to specify which um, resources I want for this job, how many nodes, how long it's going to run for. So in this case, I'm going to select a single node. Remember, this is c nodes, not cores. So this is going to give me access to 24 cores. I'm going to have a maximum wall time of 10 minutes. Okay. And finally, um, I need to tell it which budget I'm going to charge it to. 
In this case, this is my budget, you will have your own uh, budget code that you want to charge to. So, if I now launch this job, you'll see you'll get QSUB waiting for jobs to start, and then you have to wait till um, the job is scheduled um, in order to be able to um, use the interactive job. So that's the job started there. You get the message that's ready. You get this small amount of output on the um, standard out on the terminal. And you can see that my prompt has changed to uh, my username at mom. Something like that. It won't always be mom5. It'll be mom other ones. The mom nodes are the job launcher nodes on Archer. These are the only nodes that are able to submit parallel jobs. And you can see the other thing it's done slightly confusingly, is dump me back in my home um, directory rather than on work. So I need to move back to the work directory to actually run a job. So let's go to CD dollar work and it was quick start was the name of the um, directory I was in. So here we go. So here's my files. I've got my source file and my executable file. And now I'm on the mom node. I can issue AP run commands directly from the command line and launch jobs on the command on the compute node. So if I AP run minus n2 to launch a parallel job with two processes. I'm going to use the hello world program I just compiled. You can see that on the terminal I get um, hello from the two processes, that the two MPI ranks, which is what the code did, and I also get this small summary of the resources used by the program. And you'll see it's all also written um, these dot help files, which is what I was supposed to, supposed to do. So I can remove them. They've gone now. And I can resubmit again with more um, processes this time. So say I said um, six. This time it's running interactively. Of course, I get six processes again. And I get six output files this time. So this is the simple way that you can log in and start running jobs yourself. And you can, it allows you to play around with a lot of things. So say I wanted to run, um, use six processes, but split them evenly across the two cores on the compute node. So let's move the out files again. And this time I'm going to AP run minus N6, which is fine. Um, but I want to say that there are three on each of the processors. And of course we get exactly the same output, but actually this time the processes um, ran three on one processor and three on the other processor. That's what the minus S3 option does to AP run. If you try to use more um, cores than you have access to. So if in my example, uh, minus N48, I only asked for a single node, so I only have 24 cores available. You should get the error message that says that the claim exceeds the reservations node count. What this is telling you is, telling you is that you're trying to use more cores than you reserve, because I only said select equals one, so I should only have access to 24 cores. Once you've finished with your interactive session, you just type exit and you'll see that it says log out and that the job completed. And all the files that we created are still there in the directory. And once you're finished on Archer, you exit back out again. So if you have any questions on interactive jobs or you're having trouble getting them to work, please contact the Archer Help Desk and we'd be happy to help you out.